All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rabir. I hope you're all well. This video is brought to you in association with my good friends at Walrus Audio. Hopefully by now you know who they are. I've demoed loads of their gear. They're fantastic guys and they make awesome, awesome products that always look immense. If you've not heard of them, check the link in the description box. And also, if you have a moment, hit the like button and also subscribe or hit the bell notification to make sure you get more updates whenever I release videos on this channel. Anyway, today we're looking at a brand new pedal launched today from Walrus Audio and that is the EB10 preamp EQ utility pedal. So essentially what we've got here is something quite similar to the DEF CON 4 that was released last year. Um, I think it was released last year. Essentially that was a collaboration with a uh, singer-songwriter known as Ryan Adams who you know we all know about him. In any case, we're looking at the brand new EB10. Now I think my assumption here is, because I've not actually had the official line from the dudes, um, so I'm making the assumption it's a very similar kind of tool here. It's a, an EQ, EQ, three band EQ, so you've got low, mid and high. Uh, you've got up to 12 dB of boost on each one of those bands, um, and you can either boost or cut them using the little toggle switches. Hopefully you can see on the close-up cam, We've got our low, mid and high along the top from left to right and then underneath those are the toggle switches which give us our 12 dB boost or cut. And then just below that you've got a little switch that turns on a boost which is sort of a level boost which is really nice particularly if you're running into something with a bit of crunch and you want to push the front end a bit harder to saturate it up a little bit more. Um, but one thing that is very different to the DEF CON 4 is that the EB10 is now programmable. So you have two modes, you have a live mode and a preset mode. To toggle between live and preset mode, you have to hold down the foot switch for three seconds. Um, but also, if you want to save a preset, you have to be in preset mode and you only need to hold down the foot switch for one second and then all the LEDs will flash. You can have up to three different presets. The reason in my opinion that's super useful is that you can actually save obviously three different sort of combinations of EQ and boost for your, for your different sections of your songs. So it might be that you want a fat, cordy, sound which you can boost the uh, high end and the mid and get a nice amount of chord definition or if you want to go heavier and chug it out and you don't want it to get too too flubby you can actually pull out some of the low end all of which can be saved three different patches so in one song you can go for all these different sounds um, and not actually have to touch much else on the pedal board because I remember with the DEF CON 4 it was so useful um, to take the same sound, same tone, not actually touch much on your amp at all and you're able to go from something driven to something sparkly clean just with different combinations of boost and EQ. So yeah, I've always found these kind of pedals useful. Something else worth pointing out is that we've got three internal trim pots which allow us to affect the, the band of EQ on top of the Q factor uh, and which frequency we want to affect. So you can sort of set those and kind of forget about them once you've got it right. Um, and I've got a little pamphlet here which sort of points out what they do and I'll give you a little close-up of this pam pamphlet as well. Essentially we've got three different trim pots. Um, pots 1 and 2 affect frequencies, so anywhere from 3k down to 300. Um, and pots 1 and 2 uh, set the center frequency of the mid band and must be set to the same position, whereas pot 3 sets the bandwidth or Q factor of the mid band filter. So it's not like pots, it's not like you've got three pots which equate to low, mid, and high. This is more to affect the overall effect of that EQ and how it's implemented once you've set it, etc. Um, in any case, we're going to get into this video. I'll show you around some of the different uh, sounds we can create using EQ and Boost. Uh, of course, the functionality of the pedal. Um, I'm going to be using my Strat, my Les Paul, into the Rev D20 uh, with a bit of crunch on the amp. Any reverb uh, and delays coming from the Universal Audio X8P interface, which is how I'm recording this video, and that all runs into Logic. So let's crack on. Okay, I've got my guitar. As you can see on the close-up camera, everything's set to zero. So the numbers along the top of each pot uh, constitute to the amount of decibel increase or decrease. Um, so that's zero, three, six, nine, or 12 dB. And all the toggle switches are set to the boost position. If they're switched down, that means they're gonna pull that frequency out rather than add it. So um, yeah, that's how that works. Then you've got the boost switch as well, which currently isn't on. But what I wanna do really quickly is show you how to go into preset mode. So these little lights along the side here represent if we're in preset mode, one, two, or three, and if the boost's on or off. So if I turn that on, the light comes on and goes off again. If you wanna go into preset mode, hold the foot switch down for three seconds, and then you'll see the light for preset one comes on. And then you can toggle between one, two, and three by simply pressing 
uh, the foot switch. Now, the cool thing here is that if I make an adjustment, for example, if I boost some high end, you'll notice the light is now flashing for preset one, meaning I've made an adjustment and it's not the same as the preset was originally. So to save that, I just hold down for one second, all the lights flash, and now preset one has been overwritten. Um, so that's as easy as it is. Now, it is also worth saying that the trim pots inside are, you can't program those, they're set and forget, it's a separate thing. Okay, this is the sound of the guitar with the EB10 not engaged. So a little bit of crunch, nothing major. If I turn it on, pretty much identical. There's probably a little less output, uh, but nothing really drastic. So if I show you the boost first, there we go. So immediately the boost hit in the front end, we're getting a bit more drive from the amplifier. It sounds really good. So one thing that I've noticed immediately is there's a lot of low end. So the well, first thing we're gonna do is switch the low end down to subtract, and then let's take out three dBs worth. So here we go. So it's actually quite effective, really. There's 6 dB out now. It's nice. So let's boost some mid-range. Let's boost 6 dB of mid-range. So I'm just going to throw on a bit of reverb, get a bit of vibes going. Sounds really good. It's just, it's adding, it's basically improving what was already there. So let's throw on a bit more treble. Just going to drop off some mid a little bit. Okay, so let's take the boost off for a minute, just hear how the EQ is affecting the signal. So, let's get rid of the EQ altogether. So there's a lot more low end without it, but I've, I've taken out 9 dB of low end. So let's go back in. So it's definitely cleaner without the boost engaged uh, and we've got less low end, but that's nice on the neck pickup. It doesn't want to be too fluffy. I know there's a lot of reverb going on. I like it. Um, so what I want to do is want to drive using the EQ. I want to drive it a bit more. So I'm going to boost the mid range right up. So we've got 12 dB of mid range going in there. Um, and I'm actually going to add a little bit more low end back in. So we've reduced the amount of reduction to uh, only 6 dB out, so.
So that's quite a bit of mid-range boost. If I push up the treble, it should be a bit more even in terms of it shouldn't be quite such a mid-hump. Yeah, that sounds really nice. So now I've got an EQ setting that I'm into. I'm going to throw the boost on top. Definitely adding a lot to the sound. I mean, it's it's blatantly obvious. I mean, so here's a G chord. If we take it out, back in again. And I mean, that's impressive to me because, you know, like it sounds like an extension of what's already there. You know, it's a transparent sound. It feels really nice. Um, it just, it just, it's an enhancement tool. It's a utility, as they, as they said. Um, right, let's try the Les Paul. Okay, I've got the Les Paul and I haven't touched the pedal yet because I just want to hear how it sounds in comparison to the Strat. Obviously it sounds different, but it's going to have more low end and stuff. So we're, we can actually shape it um, around this. So here we go. <laughs> So tons more low end, I can just knock that up to minus six, might add a little bit more treble to plus 12, so here we go. Sounds really good. I'm gonna throw on some more gain on the amp because I wanna hear how we can affect that with the EQ pedal. So here we go. Okay, I've boosted the gain right up, so this is how it sounds. I mean, there's tons of low end, so let's just boost the amount of reduction to full. That really does really does work. So less, a bit less mid.
so I got a little bit lost in it there. What I was doing was messing with the pedal, going between, you know, like a more driven sound, We're not touching the amount of gain on the amp or anything, but then just messing with the toggle switch, actually pulling out mid-range um, to clean up the pedal, boosting the amount of reduction on the low end, and then on top of that, throwing the boost back in. And what it's given me is like a harmonically rich um, sort of push clean. <laughs> Without the boost in, at the same time with the boost back in, you know, it's articulate and it's responsive. Um, but if, for example, I want to then make it high again again, I just boost the mid-range back to nine, and we've got... The solution that I'm coming to here, which is really cool, is with one guitar, the pedal, not touching the amplifier at all, I can save two presets, for example, and I'll do this, is go between this sound, which is nice and fat, and then change over to the sort of mid-out sound, which is cleaner, without the boost in. So what I'm going to do is go into preset mode, hold down for three seconds, we're in preset one. First thing I'm going to do is sort of adjust all the controls to where they are, so sort of move one notch, then come back. Same with the toggle switches. I just want to make sure that everything is fresh. And then I'm going to save this to preset. Oh, I'm also going to uh, put the boost in for this one. So save that. So that's saved. Now if I go to preset 2, I want the boost out. I want the mid to be cut. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and flick all these switches again. And I want the mid to be cut by 6. I'm going to save that. So, if I go to preset number one, this is my sort of fat sound. Sounds lovely. Preset two, boost is off and the mid is cut. And now, now it should sound like this. And then back to preset one. And that right there, I think, is the icing on the cake of this pedal, because I really love the DEFCON 4 for the same reason. You could go from a glassy clean through to a, a sort of hard rock crunch just by changing the the controls on the pedal and not having to touch anything else. But the, the icing on the cake is now saving presets and being able to recall them. I think that's genius, and I'm really glad they did that with this pedal, because as you heard, preset one is kind of my harder rock sort of you know, straight up rock rhythm tone, and then without touching anything except going to preset two, and I'm now, all I've done is adjusted a bit of EQ in the pedal and taken the boost out and saved that, and it's given me like a glassy clean sort of thing. So you don't even need to, with one pedal, you can essentially have like a clean and a crunch channel without touching anything on the amp. It's really, really cool. And I think that that is probably the thing that the DEFCON 4 was missing, and now having the EB10 with that extra functionality has really opened it up. Um, and I think that's a killer, killer pedal. So there you go, there's a look at the Warus Audio EB10. As I just said, I do think that now that we've got the extra functionality of being able to save and recall presets, it's just made this pedal a damn useful tool. And I, I recommend giving it a go. I did love the DEFCON 4, and hopefully some of you guys you know, got one of those pedals when it arrived, and I think you know, if you like that, then this is definitely up the same street, but now we can save presets and recall them when we want. And I just think that's really made this pedal stand out even more so. I'm really happy that uh, Walrus Audio sent this over for me to try. As always, I love working with those guys. I really support their brand and I think they do great pedals. They all look incredible and they're always doing something just a little bit different from other guys and that's what I really like. So thank you to Walrus Audio for sending this pedal over. 
please let me know what you think in the comment section below and I'll put links uh, in the description box for both the EB10 and the DEFCON 4 and to Warus Audio if you want to find out more information about them. As always, thank you for watching, like, subscribe and share and I'll see you all very soon.